What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. So today I bring you a mighty head-to-head -head comparison between two of the biggest flagship smartphones of this year. So we have the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra versus the Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now I have both base models here with 128 gigs of internal storage, but the S21 Ultra comes with 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and the 12 Pro Max comes with six gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. And as you can see from the side-by-side -side specs, everything in green is what is the same and everything in red is what differs. Now this is an extreme head-to-head -head comparison and in this video we will be comparing everything from the sensors, screen, build quality and lots more. Now first of all the prices from their official websites. So the S21 Ultra currently costs £1,149 and the 12 Pro Max is currently priced at £1099. So we are going to be doing this football match style again just for fun. So let's see what happens. So first of all, the boxes. Now the S21 has a small box. There is no charger inside or any other accessory apart from a USB Type-C cable and some paperwork. The 12 Pro Max also comes in a small box. And again, no power brick, no charger included. You get some paperwork and a lightning to Type-C cable. So it looks like both devices score nothing in the first round. So nil nil to both. And here they both are, in my hands, the biggest flagship smartphones of this year, the maxed out and ultra versions of both brands, the best of what they have to offer. And the first thing to mention is of course the design and build quality. So if we begin with the ultra, we have an aluminum metal frame going all the way around, including the entire camera bump. And the back is made from this smooth glass, black matte finish. So phantom black is the color. And I am already a fan of this new camera bump design. I love how it blends in to the side of the phone. And you can see that this camera bump is huge uh, compared to the S21 model, which I reviewed a few days ago and you can also see side by side what phantom gray and phantom black look like and you can see the size difference of that bump and the entire phone back to the action the iphone 12 pro max is made from a stainless steel frame going all the way around and you have apple's new ceramic glass back which is supposed to be the toughest glass you can get. Now both phones do an extremely good job of preventing fingerprints. They are both super premium, beautifully designed smartphones. And I think it would be a crime to choose one over the other. So let's score them 1-1 one, one for design and build quality. Give them a point each, because let's face it, these are both beautiful looking smartphones. Now let's talk about the screens. I've got both phones set on 50% brightness. Hold them up together to show you what to expect. And if we pull up a white background, you can see the brightness is pretty even on both smartphones at 50%. And what I will do is turn that brightness to 100% just to see the difference. And at 100% brightness, the iPhone seems to be slightly brighter to me. If I turn it all the way down, so with the brightness all the way down, you can still see the iPhone screen, but you cannot see the Galaxy at all. What I'm going to do is turn off my studio lights, a nighttime feel going. If you imagine you're going to be sleeping, you've got the brightness completely down. The iPhone 12 Pro Max still has a brighter display. Okay, let's get them back to 50% again. So that was the brightness. Now let's talk about the screens themselves. So the S21 Ultra has a 6.8 inch AMOLED display and the 12 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch OLED display. The S21 Ultra's display is 120 Hertz WQHD plus resolution with 516 pixels per inch. And the 12 Pro Max's display is 60 Hertz full HD plus resolution and 458 pixels per inch. Now, to be completely honest, both displays look impressive in practical use. I've been using both of these phones for many days but I like how you have the option to customize the refresh rate and resolution on the S21 Ultra, whereas the 12 Pro Max's display is completely fixed and you cannot change things apart from magnification of icons. 
Also, the S21 Ultra has a full screen display which curves beautifully around the edges with a small hole punch camera at the top center. Whereas the iPhone has its trademark flat display with its large notch on the top for the camera and Face ID sensors. Now again, both displays are stunning in practical use. Nice, large displays, great for multimedia and gaming. You will definitely not be disappointed if you had either one. But regardless, the obvious winner for me for this round is going to have to be the S21 Ultra. So one point goes to the Ultra, bringing the score two to one. Now let's talk about the processing power. Both smartphones are powered by a five nanometer chip. The S21 Ultra has the Exynos 2100 clocked at 2.91 gigahertz. The 12 Pro Max has Apple's A14 Bionic chip clocked at 3.1 gigahertz. The S21 has 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and the iPhone has six gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. Now both have 128 gigs of internal storage and there is no micro SD card expansion on either smartphones. So who gets the point for processing power? Well, we're gonna have to turn to the benchmarks for this one, as it is a close call. The extra RAM in the Galaxy means better multitasking and slightly better performance when opening and closing apps. But what are the benchmarks saying? So you can see Samsung scored 633K compared to 594 on the iPhone. And the Samsung also wins nearly every single category there is on this benchmark. And I also had to run a Geekbench test. And this time you will notice that the iPhone performed better in both single and multi-core scores in the Geekbench test. So based on the benchmark results, it looks like they are both getting one apiece, bringing our current score to 3-2. Now, what about sustaining real-time performance? So the more you use a device, the temperature gradually increases affecting performance. It happens with more or less all smartphones. So to test out both of these devices, I ran three Antutu benchmark tests back to back on each device to see if it can sustain its performance when being pushed. And here are the results of both devices on screen. In the S21 Ultra, you can see that superior power. In fact, all three scores were higher than the iPhone's results. But you can see both phones dropped in performance with every round, but it seems like the iPhone dropped more in overall performance. So it looks like this round is going to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, bringing the scores to 4.2. All right, so now let's check out the internal disk speeds. We have exactly the same storage sizes, so 128 gigs each, but the S21 Ultra supports UFS 3.1, and the iPhone has a different storage totally. It supports NVMe. We've got some interesting results here to share. If I just bring the Samsung closer, you can see read speeds of 1.3 gigabytes per second and write speeds of 325 megabytes per second. So very impressive results there. Now here are the iPhone results read speeds of 799 megabytes per second and write speeds of 500 megabytes per second. So both have pretty impressive internal disk speeds. And if I just bring them closer side by side, you can see that the S21 reads faster, but the iPhone writes faster. So I don't have a choice here. One point each people. So that brings our score to five three with Samsung taking the comfortable lead at the moment. Now let's compare the system OS. The S21 Ultra is running Android 11 with One UI 3.1 on top. I've been super impressed. Um, they've really fine tuned things. It's come a long way. Um, it's a very nice, fast, uh, refined operating system. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max is running iOS 14.2.1 a simple OS, not much has changed throughout the years. We're getting very minor increments, but apart from the fact that it is very simple to use, somebody who's not very tech savvy can pick up an iPhone and say, hey, that's actually quite easy to use. And that is how they've designed their OS. Um, Android is also quite easy to use, but there's more technicalities to it. There's more you can do with it. Um, the settings and everything is more advanced. So a less tech savvy person uh, might find some things a bit complicated in Android. I can tell you which one is my favorite. That's just gonna be really biased. And let's just be honest about it. This is a subjective matter. Some people just like iOS and some people just like Android. Everyone has a different opinion. So I'm not gonna go down that road, but what I will say in 2021 right now, 
both of these OS's are very good, very productive. They both have their pros and cons. And I could probably do a whole video comparing both of their pros and cons. Now in this scenario and trying to avoid that Android versus iOS battle, um, they both have their own pros and cons. I think it will only be fair at this stage to give them both a point each. So that brings our score to six, four. So Samsung is still taking the lead, but now this is the one I have been waiting for. We are coming to the cameras. Now both of these phones have the best cameras you can currently buy on smartphones. The S21 Ultra will give you a quad rear camera setup. You have a 108 megapixel primary sensor by Samsung, a 12.2 megapixel ultra wide Sony sensor, and you also get two more 10 megapixel telephoto sensors by Samsung. And on the front, we have a hole punch center camera, and that is a 44 megapixel selfie camera by Samsung. So it looks like Samsung has gone all out with the cameras on that ultra phone. Now to compare, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has triple sensors. So 12 megapixel primary Sony sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, also a Sony sensor, and a 12 megapixel telephoto Sony sensor. And on the front, on that very attractive notch, you get another 12 megapixel selfie camera Sony sensor. So it looks like the S21 Ultra relies on its own Samsung sensors and the iPhone has all Sony sensors. So who's going to win the points for this round? It is a tough one. We cannot go by what's written on paper. We have to test them out. We have to make sure. And I am currently working on a full camera comparison between these two Titans. So for this round, let's just compare the primary sensors and 4K 60 video. So we have 108 megapixels versus 12 megapixels. It just sounds like a crazy comparison, but let's go ahead and do it. So here is the first shot. The S21 Ultra on the left and the 12 Pro Max on the right. So what do you guys think? In my opinion, I think the iPhone looks better. Super sharp and accurate colors. Now the iPhone actually produces exactly what my naked eye can see. Very, very nice results. The Samsung's blacks are a little washed out, especially if you look at the figure's head and even the blue shirt looks slightly faded. iPhone has nailed the first photo. Now the next shot is outdoors. Again, 108 megapixels versus 12. Primary sensor comparison. The iPhone is again, super impressive. Literally reproduces what my eyes can see. The color accuracy is amazing, but not just that, the overall shot looks so good. Lots of detail. Everything seems very nicely focused. The iPhone's 12 megapixel is producing what the Samsung's Ultra 108 megapixel is supposed to do. I even had to double check that I've not mixed up the photos. So this is the reality, people. The iPhone produces better overall results. Now the Samsung looks less sharp in certain areas like the fence and the garage door. Even the brickwork at the bottom of the fence looks more prominent in the iPhone's shots. Now, here is an indoor shot of a magazine. This is a good one because if you look at the table in both shots, you will notice that the iPhone's table looks slightly washed out. And that is actually how it looks in reality. But I have to admit, Samsung made that faded table look nice again. The magazine looks pretty much the same in both shots, nothing to separate them. So I'm giving this one to Samsung, but on many occasions, natural color needs to be enhanced to look better. And that's what's happened with this table. Now it seems like I am nitpicking, but the photos are so damn good on both devices that the only differences you'll find is minute and you're gonna to have to nitpick to find them. Otherwise I can say they are both amazing at shooting photos, but in reality, I do think that the iPhone does do slightly better. Now video quality actually surprised me. This is 4K at 30 frames per second. You have super smooth looking video on both. Colors and contrast look identical. It seems like I'm shooting video from the same device. The Samsung has really surprised me this year with the enhanced video quality. It's literally on par with the iPhone. So that was a very quick taste on what's to come in my upcoming camera comparison. And in this brief test, it looks like these two flagships have absolutely nailed it in both departments. But who gets the point? Well, in this case, I'm going to have to give it to the iPhone, considering it was a primary sensor contest and Samsung actually had the advantage with its massive 108 megapixel shooter versus iPhone's modest 12 megapixel sensor. I never expected iPhone to do better in this scenario, but it did. It took better overall quality photos 
in this test versus the Samsung. And of course, this is not a full camera test. It can go either way in the full comparison. Both have many camera features that need to be tested and compared. So stay tuned for that video. But for this brief primary sensor comparison, the iPhone was actually one-on-one -on -one with the Keeper and he just couldn't miss. It's a goal, people. So that brings our current score to 6.5 to Samsung. So Samsung is still in the lead. Now, both smartphones have Bluetooth version 5. The S21 Ultra has Bluetooth 5.2 versus Bluetooth 5.1 on the iPhone. Both support Wi-Fi 6 and 5G along with NFC and both have stereo speakers, but you do not have any audio jack on either device. It's time to test out the sounds. The Ultra has stereo speakers tuned by AKG and the 12 Pro Max has stereo speakers and supports Atmos sounds. Now both speakers are located one at the bottom and one on the earpiece. So let's go ahead and test out the sounds and decide which one sounds better. So we're doing the Ultra first. Wow. Throughout history, different cultures all over the world reference a great tournament. Throughout history, different cultures all over the world reference a great tournament. So incredible cinematic sounds coming from both devices. It's definitely hard to choose between them. But what I found is the iPhone produces a more surround sound effect going on. It sounds slightly better in my personal opinion. Now this again is subjective. Some of you might like the ultra better, but with both of these phones in front of me playing the same trailers, the same music, um, I have to give it to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So the score has been evened and I think it's with a free kick just outside the penalty box, bringing our score to level six all people, six, six. Now who would have guessed that? Okay, coming to the battery and fast charging. Now the S21 Ultra has a pretty generous 5,000 milliamp hour battery and it supports 25 watt fast charging and 15 watt wireless charging. But there is of course no power brick included in the box. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 3,687 milliamp hour battery. So that's 1,313 milliamp hours less than the Samsung. And the iPhone supports 20 watts fast charging. So slightly slower fast charging than the Samsung. And you also get 7.5 watts wireless charging. So half the wireless charging speed than the Samsung and also no power brick in the box. Now both phones actually offer a great battery life in practical use and I'm going to refer to Arun's recent battery drain video and I will link it in the description in case you have not seen it. The iPhone 12 Pro Max achieved 7 hours 56 minutes of screen on time and the Galaxy S21 Ultra achieved 8 hours and 41 minutes of screen on time. And I tested out the charging speeds myself. The iPhone 12 Pro Max takes 1 hour 49 minutes to fully charge from 0 to 100 and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra takes 1 hour 9 minutes to fully charge. So what does that mean people? That means Samsung just scored a penalty in the 90th minute and the final score is now 7-6 to Samsung. So there you have it guys. That was my head-to-head -head comparison between the two Titans, the S21 Ultra versus the iPhone 12 Pro Max, covering the design, screen, specs, performance, cameras, and lots more. So interesting results. The winner is of course the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, but it was a very close match. And here is the breakdown on screen so you can see how they both scored throughout. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that these two phones are the very best phones that money can buy right now. They both have everything you could possibly want from an ultra premium flagship smartphone. If you owned any one of these phones, I don't think you would ever regret your purchase. 
Either way, your mind is going to be blown. The S21 Ultra did a few things better this year when compared to their own last year's model. Um, the new design, the screen quality, the powerful performance. And don't forget, this is the Exynos 2100 version of the Ultra. I've not tested the Snapdragon 888 version yet, um, but even the Exynos was impressive in performance when compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, even the cameras on both were outstanding, especially the video quality. The video quality was on par with each other. Now, my full camera comparison is coming soon. So these two Titans will clash once again very soon. So let me know what you guys think. How did you guys score it? Do let me know your scores in the comments. And with that being said, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.